Help me shout the final solution. Jesus. You'll experience it in Jesus' name. Father, we do thank you for this hour. We thank you, Lord, for your manifestation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the power that you have prepared and the provision you have made available for every one of your children. I'm asking, Lord, that today will be a day of breakthrough, a day of power manifestation, a day of healing and deliverance, and a day when you magnify your holy name in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're looking at the message, the healing stripes of Jesus. And I'm reading to you from Isaiah chapter 53. I read from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53, reading from verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes were healed. Those were prophetic words. From Isaiah, the same prophet that prophesied about his birth, the same prophet that prophesied about his first coming, that same prophet that declared, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, his name will be called Wonderful, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The same prophet is telling us, surely he has borne our griefs. That same prophet that said, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. And that son will be called Emmanuel, God with us. That's the same prophet that is telling us by revelation, surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows. Griefs bring pain, sorrow brings suffering. And Isaiah tells us this one coming that he was speaking about will bear, will carry, will take away all our griefs and all our sorrows. And it says, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Why was he smitten by God? He carried our sin. He carried our iniquity. He carried our transgressions. He took upon himself every evil sin that we have done. And because God is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity, than to behold sin, than to behold evil, that's why when the evils of the world the sins of the human race, the transgressions of transgressors, when they came on Christ, the Lord God in heaven, the Almighty, 
turned away his face from him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was because of that that the Lord God in heaven turned away from him and smote him, afflicted him, punished him. The punishment was should have borne, the smiting was should have borne, the affliction was should have carried because he voluntarily carried everything. That's why he was smitten of God. And it says, He, Christ, was wounded for our transgression. The wound we should have received. And the punishment we should have taken. Everything came upon him. He was bruised for iniquities. Our iniquities, our sins, our transgression, our failures brought the wounds on him. The wounds on his hand. The wounds in his feet. The wound by sight. All that was caused by our transgression and iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. We wouldn't have peace with God. Were it not for the chastisement? Why it not for the stripes? Why it not for the suffering that he bore? And then the prophet now tells us, By or with the stripes we are healed. Healing, the healing of the body, has been revealed from the beginning of the Bible. And to have the healing, yes, Christ has suffered. And he had borne the stripes, just like he was wounded for a transgression. For us to have the forgiveness from the transgression, we still must repent. We still must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing, he had the stripes, and the stripes were laid upon him. And yet, for us to be healed, we still have to come to him. We still have to call upon him. And we still have to find the origin, the source of that sickness. Get rid of the source and then we'll have by faith. Because of what he has done, we'll have the healing. We're coming to Genesis chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 1. The first mention of anything in the Bible is very important. And here is the first mention of healing. And the first mention of prayer for healing. And the first mention of receiving healing. For an individual, for a family. And for the people that have been afflicted, I'm coming to Genesis chapter 20. And I read from verse 7. Looking at verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee. And thou shalt live and if thou restore her not know that know thou that thou shalt surely die thou and all that are thine here is the first mention of sickness infirmity messengers of death coming to a man and he happened to be a king 
he had done something wrong. He had taken the wife of Abraham. And because of that, affliction came. Because of that, sickness came. Because of that, a deadly infirmity came. And sterility also came. And the Lord said, there is only one way for healing. Restore the man, his wife. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. The first sickness came as a result of touching whom the Lord called a prophet. And that same prophet now will pray for Abimelech and his house after he had done the right thing. And he will be healed after you have done what God expects you to do. Your healing is guaranteed. You didn't hear that one. I said your healing is guaranteed. Can I say something here? That if Abimelech had sought human precision, human helper, and had not done what the Lord wanted him to do, he would still not be healed. Because this was because of what he had done. That the Lord said, the only solution, the final solution, and the full solution that will come to him, will come after he had restored Abraham's wife. Let me say another thing. If all the men in the world were doctors, all men in the world, doctors, if all the women in the world were nurses, if all the houses in the world were hospitals, people will still be sick. If all men were doctors, if all women were nurses, if all houses were hospitals, people were still the same. Why? Oh, because of sin. Sin brings sickness. And if all the men in the world were doctors, if all the women in the world were nurses, if all the houses in the world were hospitals, there will still be people who will not be healed. Why? Because if they do not do what God wants them to do, they will not be healed. Now therefore, restore the man is why. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou, know thou, that thou shalt, what's the next word there? Surely die, thou and all that are thine. We we'll learn something here. Abimelech was the only one that got Sarah, Abraham's wife. Yes, he sent messengers, he sent people, but those messengers were not have, were not supposed to have any intimacy, any kind of knowledge of Abraham's wife. Abimelech alone wanted to do that. He had not even done it. Sin intended. Sin visualized. Sin that he wanted to commit, which he has not even committed, 
brought sickness not only on him but on all the people in his house all that are thine and the lord now showed him the way of healing the way of escape thank god he did what the lord called him to do thank god you will do what the lord has called you to do amen verse 14 and abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto abraham look at this king we'll see heathen king pagan king not of the tribe any of the tribes of israel and yet when he did what the lord told him to do he didn't do it grudgingly he did it cheerfully wholeheartedly and he gave everything even what god did not mention gave them to abraham what's a lesson for us that when god tells us to do something we do it cheerfully we do it with all our heart and our blessing will be final and our solution will be final in jesus name but look at this if that's all that he did and he gave sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants to abraham if he didn't restore sarah he still would have died why what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul one soul one person is greater is higher in value than all the sheep than all the oxen than all the things that he gave sarah was the one in question and if she he didn't give back sarah he will still be sick might go for medical in his own nation outside his own nation anywhere the hand of god was there and if he didn't do what the lord wanted him to do he would have died but thank god he did it thank god you'll do it he restored him sarah his wife look at verse 17 so abraham prayed unto god abraham prayed unto god you, you know there are people that are too eager to pray and they pray pray and pray they love prayer they delight in prayer abraham did not pray for him unto god before he did what the lord wanted him to do before he restored sarah abraham did not pray why was he angry was he unhappy was he retaliating no because he knew the principle of god he knew the precept of god he knew do this after that abraham will pray for you and abraham was in agreement with god and because of that abraham did not rush into prayer when we do what god wants us to do the prayer that is preached will be effective in every one of our lives did you say amen to that so abraham prayed unto god and god healed abimelech and his wife and his maid servants and 
they bear children. God will answer our prayer. Amen. In Numbers chapter 21, Numbers chapter 21, I'm reading here from verse 4. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. And he journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Here we find another situation now. Discouragement in the heart can bring depression, distress, and eventually lead to disease. We must live a happy life. We must live a joyful life, a cheerful life. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. That's in Proverbs. When you're happy, when you're joyful, the joy of the Lord, the joy in your heart is the source of your strength. It's your strength. You'll be happy. That's why we must not be negative. Look at this. We're depressed. Hear that. We're depressed. There are some people that must hear bad news, discouraging news, every day before they go to sleep. It's like they're hunting for them. And if they have not had bad news before they go to sleep, they will not sleep. They're still searching. I've not had my news today. What's happening in the village? What's happening here? What's happening there? When you stop yourself with bad news, bad action, and bad things, just before you go to sleep, like almost every time, you are likely to get sick and to remain sick. Because in the night, all that your mind and your subconscious can think about will be the bad news you heard before you went to bed. That's why after you finish work from your office, let all those things remain there. Come back home, have fellowship in your family, and have fellowship with God in the world. But because of the way, and he thought about it, they became discouraged. Hold on. Moses was also walking in the same way. Aaron, Miriam, Joshua, Caleb, also walking in the same way. They were not the only people who were walking the same way. And yet, they were not allowed discouragement. They were discouraged because of the way. And the people speak against God and against Moses. Discouragement affects the heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And because of what was on their heart, they now spoke. And it says, they spoke against God. They spoke against Moses. Wherefore, have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There are some people, not that they want to die, but death is not far from their tongue. I will die. I will die. Some people, a little problem of cause, and death is not far from their tongue. This will kill me. I'm going. I'm gone. It's even better. God, take care of my children. I'm going. Don't speak about death like that. Don't invite death. Do you want to die now? Do you want to die before the new year? Why are you inviting death? Why are you telling death to come? They were inviting death. I will not invite death. The older I get, the stronger I get. The older I get, the healthier I get. 
death, stay away. I still have some work to do. You, could, you didn't command death to stay away. I still have some work to do. You will not die. Look at verse 6. And the Lord sent very serpents among the people, and they beat the people. And much people of Israel died. Look up here. If somebody eats manna from heaven every day, and somebody has the most powerful prophet at his reach every day, and somebody has all the promises God has given, and those promises are yes and amen every day, sickness can still come. The children of Israel had Moses all their own. The children of Israel had manna that they ate every day. The children of Israel had the healing covenant that God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Sickness still came. Death still came. You know why? Their tongue, their transgression. Let me say this again. If all men in the world were doctors, and all women in the world with all the ladies were nurses, if all the, if all the houses in the world were hospitals, there will still be sickness. Those who will be sick will still be sick. Go further. If all men in the church were prayer warriors, and all the women in the church were prayer warriors, those who will be sick will still be sick. Their tongue, their, trans their transgression will still make them sick. That's the reason why, as they were discouraged, and they began to speak against Moses and against God, the serpents came and beat them. And much people, many, became sick and they died. But there is a way out of that sickness, a way out of that infirmity, Verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. How did Abimelech get the healing, the deliverance? And how did God stop that death penalty by repentance, restoration, restitution? And the people here did exactly the same thing. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Repentance before the prayer. Coming out and confessing and turning away from their sin before the prayer. If we do what these Bible characters have done, we will get the miracles that those Bible characters got. Okay, I'll say it for myself. If you do, what these Bible characters have done. And it's not just pray, 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 pray. Without repentance, without a turning around. If we do what these Bible characters have done, we will get the same healing, the same deliverance, the same miracle 
the same signs and wonders that the Bible characters God, you will get in Jesus' name. Last line of verse 7. And Moses prayed for the people. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten, when he looketh on it, shall live. The leaders must do what God expects us to do. The pastors must do what God expects us to do. There are pastors who are also prayer warriors. And they pray, they pray quite a lot. And they are wondering why is it that the people, the majority of them, are still not healed. God told Moses, He said, Make thee a fiery serpent. Make it from bronze. Put it upon a pole. Lord, the people are suffering already. Some are about to die. And by the time I go to make the fairy serpent, time is going. Can't I pray for them now? Because they said pray for us. And I'm willing to pray for them. I'm willing to overlook. I'm willing to love them. In spite of what they have done, what they have said, God said, make thee a fairy serpent. All the time you are wasting, and you are not doing what I told you to do, more people will be dying. When you make the fairy serpent, you hang it upon a pole, and then you call all of them. You say, I need to talk to you. I need to give you instruction. While you are giving instruction and you are teaching, don't you think that many people will keep on suffering? That's what God said Moses should do. As the people do what the Lord wants them to do, the, pe the preacher, the prophet, the pastor must also do what the Lord has told him to do. Talk to your people. Tell them. That is the solution, the final solution. Let them look and see, and they will be healed. For as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man shall be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, will not die, but will have everlasting life eternal life abundant life healthy life sound life progressive life in jesus name and moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that he a man, if a serpent had beaten any man, the same solution for everyone. If a serpent had beaten any man, there are people that look for special attention. Moses said, here is what the Lord had called me to do. Look at the serpent on the pole. And everyone low and high, educated and illiterate, everyone man or woman, everyone young or old, when he looks at that serpent on the pole, he will be healed. If any of those people had said, Moses, you know me. And you know I'm not an ordinary person in the congregation. I hear the general provision, but I need special attention. 
that you will come, hear my story, lay hands on me, I will be all right. No, you will not be all right. If all the men in the church and all the women in the church were prayer warriors and counselors, and they will give personal attention to everyone, one by one, those who will be sick will still be sick. Because there are people that will not take the instruction of the word of God. There are people that will not accept the provision that God has made. They'll be looking for an alternative. But it says in verse 9, and Moses made a serpent of brass. And he put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. He will live. I will leave. The Lord will fulfill his word in your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 53. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the hand of the Lord revealed? Who has believed our report to get the benefit of the prophecy of Isaiah? You must believe report to get the fulfillment of what the strives of Christ will do. You must believe the report was believed a report only to those people. The arm of the Lord will be revealed. What does it mean, arm of the Lord? As a man, as a woman, when you want to manifest strength, power, energy, you don't use your belly to demonstrate your energy, your power. You don't use your eyes. To demonstrate your energy, your power, your strength, you use your arm. You carry that thing. The arm of a strong man and the arm of the Almighty is the strength of the Almighty. It's the power of the Almighty. That when you believe the report, the arm of the Lord that saves will be manifested in your life. The arm of the Lord that heals and delivers will be manifested in your life. Was believed a report? Was a report? But for surely he has borne our griefs. Was the report? He has carried our sorrows. Was the report? Yet we did him esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Was the report? He was wounded. For our transgressions. Was the report? He was bruised for iniquities. Was the report? The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Was the report? Verse 6 All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every man to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him. The iniquity of us all. When we believe that report, accept that report. When we trust in that report, and we say, The Heavenly Father has laid all my iniquities, all my transgressions, and all the consequences of my sin. Everything has been laid on Him. Healing. Is definite. Salvation is guaranteed. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. 
when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the evil spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. He, Christ, our Savior, our healer, our redeemer, our deliverer, cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. There were children of Israel that didn't know their sicknesses were caused by evil spirits. For Christ knew. There were people that didn't know that the blindness was caused by evil spirit. But Jesus knew that their deafness was caused by evil spirit. But Jesus knew that their being dumb or their child being dumb was caused by evil spirits. But Christ knew the woman that was bent over 18 years, she never saw, she never knew that the bending over the bondage was caused by a spirit of infirmity. And Jesus knew, and if there is anyone that has an evil spirit, although he doesn't call it evil, she doesn't call it evil, but she embraces that spirit, loves that spirit, and goes along with that spirit like a constant companion. Why? Because she says, if somebody offends me, and I tell that person, you will die. You will die. If that happens, that's the oppression of evil spirits. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. As the Holy Ghost speaks through us and healing comes to you, the evil spirit speaks through another person and sickness can come. And so if there are people that rejoice and they say, I have power, I have power. And the evil spirit in them makes them to pronounce a curse, an affliction on their so-called enemies. And those things happen to their enemies. They have evil spirits. And when Christ or the messengers, ministers of Christ want to cast out that evil spirit, they say, no, it's my friend. No, I use him. No, we are companions together. They will remain sick. There must be the release of that evil spirit to go away from your life and to say, your power is a deadly power, negative power. I don't want anything to do with you. And you present your life to Christ, it will cast out every evil spirit. There's no friendly evil spirit. There is no profitable devil. And there is no a good demon. All of them are evil. And all of them, by the word of Christ, must be cast out in Jesus' name. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet himself took our infirmities and bare 
our sicknesses. Himself, Himself, he Himself will bear away your infirmity. He will come to you this morning. He will take your infirmity away. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Hold on. There are people that you think is the shouting that will heal the sick. No anointing. Shouting without anointing. Boxing the air without anointing. Sweating without anointing. Running up and down without anointing. Psychology without anointing. And brainwashing without anointing. All that is a waste of time. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And this morning, anointing will break every yoke in your life. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The power that comes with the Holy Ghost is supernatural power. And no matter the source of that sickness or, the, or that infirmity, supernatural Holy Ghost power will heal and take away that infirmity. Who went about doing good, went about doing good, he applied different methods at different times. Sometimes he speaks the word only. And a servant that is far away is healed. Sometimes he proclaims and pronounces the healing. Go back home. Your daughter, your son is healed. And Jairus went back home. And he met the people coming from the house. And he said, your son is healed. And he requested, he wanted to know what hour that son was healed. He said, at this hour. And he knew it was when Jesus pronounced the word that the son was healed. The son was healed. The word coming to you is coming with power. Coming with healing. Coming with deliverance. You are healed and delivered in Jesus' name. He went about doing good and healing. Tell me how many people. All that were oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. There are some people that say God made them sick. If you attribute the work of the devil to God, and you're saying, God is your problem. God made me sick. God gave me the sickness. Jesus cannot take away what God gave you. I and my Father are one. And I always do. What I see the Father do. And if you affirm that your sickness is from God, He gave me the sickness to teach me a lesson. Christ cannot take away what His Father, what you say His Father has given you. Some people say, God gave me the sickness. To make me humble. And while I have that sickness, that infirmity, God is gracious. He knows I could be proud. And to help me not to be proud, He gave me the sickness. Well, if that's your understanding, you cannot ask Jesus, the Son of God, to take away what his heavenly father 
has given you. God does not give any believer sickness. I say God will not give you as a believer sickness. If there's infirmity there, if there's any problem there, it was caused by the devil. And Jesus goes about and he takes away all the oppression, all the calamity that the devil has brought in your life. He will do it this morning. For God was with him. Remember, after that has been done, healed by the mercy of Christ, healed by the stripes of Christ, healed by the chastisement that came upon Christ. Remember, what brought that sickness originally was seen. And after you are healed by his stripes, you must be kept holy by his blood. John chapter 5, John chapter 5, verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Anybody there? Thou art made whole. You are made well. There will be wholeness and soundness in every part of your body in Jesus' name. Behold, thou art made whole. Look at this. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. The healing of Christ, the strives of Christ, is not a license for drunkenness. It's not a license for smoking. It's not a license for defilement. It's not a license for continuing in sin. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. You remember this man had been sick for thirty and eight years. Verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Sickness of thirty eight years healed. And Jesus said, Always carry in your mind the pain you went through. The pressure you went through, the waste of money that came as a result of the long standing many years of that sickness. Now you are made whole. Sin no more. Don't go back to sin. Let the grace of God fill the vacant, empty space in your heart. Sin no more. Lest. A worse sin come unto you. You will not allow a worse sin to come back to your life. By stripes, you're healed. By his blood, you're saved. First Peter chapter 2. In First Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin that's what's important after you are healed as you are saved as you are born again that you don't live a careless life you don't live a carefree life you don't live a sinful life you don't live an unrighteous life thinking by stripes I'm healed, by stripes I'm healed, by stripes I'm healed. Do you see the first part of the sentence? Being dead to sin. We should live unto righteousness. After that now, by whose stripes, tell me, 
by whose stripes you are healed. Those stripes are mighty and powerful enough to heal everyone. And today is your day. This morning is your morning. James chapter 5. In James chapter 5, verse 14, is any sick among you? And it doesn't matter the kind of sickness. Is any sick among you? Doesn't matter how long that sickness had been and what the name of the sickness might be. Is any sick among you? And it doesn't matter whether you are a man or you are a woman. And is a sickness peculiar to men or is sickness peculiar to women? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. That oil is the emblem of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord will work mightily in your life. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Anytime, every time, morning and evening, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. The Lord will raise you up. The Lord will deliver you. But look at this. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Why is that there? We're talking about healing. We're talking about the prayer of faith. And we're talking about the assurance that the prayer of faith shall save the seed. The Lord shall raise him up. And then it says, if the sickness was caused by sins you have committed, if we leave the sin there and we only pray, pray, pray and pray, the sin will still bring greater sickness back. You'll be free from sin. You'll be free from sickness. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. And remember here now, he's talking to believers. Confess your sins one to another. As members of the church, you've been living a careless life. And you've done evil things sinful things you make restitution confess your faults one to another but look at this passage is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him you are an elder in the church a preacher in the church a pastor in the church a leader, if you have committed sins, the sin will hinder and block the prayer you pray. Confess your faults one to another. Then you say, I'm a prayer warrior, you are treating your wife at home, make right. You are a leader, you are a worker. And the word of God encourages us, pray one for another. But you're brutal, you're violent, you're wicked. And you claim to be a Christian, to be a worker. If you pray, your prayer will be blocked. That's why it says, confess your faults one to another. And many times we have heard, your wife is sick at home. Lay those anointed hands on your wife 
and your wife will be healed. You are being maltreating your wife. And you are being starving your wife. And you have been making your wife angry every time. And she has to be praying, oh God, don't allow the actions of this man to send me to hell. I wasn't like this. I'm normally a woman of love, expressive, and I love people. And yet the man is still treating me. I want to love him, but honestly, Lord, you know my heart. How can I love as I ought to love under this oppression? And all that is making the woman sick. And now, husbands, if your wife is sick, lay hands on her. And pray in the name of Jesus, she'll be healed. Confess your faults one to another. As a husband, you'll confess, you'll apologize. As a wife, you'll confess, you'll apologize. And when that is done from a heart that is obedient to the word of God, pray one for another that ye may be healed. We will be healed. I will be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's the prayer we're going to pray this morning. Effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, of a sanctified man, of a spirit-filled man, of a consecrated man. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The prayer we pray this morning will avail much. On your heart, on your body, in your life, in your family, on your children, on your husband, on your wife, on every retreat participant, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man will avail much this morning in Jesus' name. Are you ready for your healing? Are you ready for your deliverance? Are you ready for your power manifestation? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, rise up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, here I am. Remember the first healing in the Bible. Abimelech had to restore Abraham's wife. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, yeah, if I've done anything wrong, Lord, I will do no more. Tell the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost search your heart. Remember, if all the men and women here were prayer warriors, if sin is there, you will not be healed. If all the men were doctors, if all the women were nurses, if all the houses were hospitals, if you embrace sin, love sin, hold on to sin, sickness will still be there. If you lay your iniquity upon him, if you tell the Lord, I'm sorry for any evil thing I've done. Against your commandments. Against any of your creatures. Against any of the believers. I repent in dust and ashes. Don't hide sin. Don't cover up sin. Don't love sin. Don't keep on sinning. Give it up. You're taking another person's wife. 
give the wife back. You've taken another person's husband, give the husband back. You've run away with somebody's daughter, give the daughter back to the parents. You've taken somebody else's authority and position. Give it back. You've taken other people's money. Give it back. We cannot remain in sin and say that healing will continue. We cannot be oppressing other people, depressing other people, discouraging other people. Making other people seek and say that we will be well. The stripes of Jesus does not give a license for living in sin. Repent, restore. The righteous be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And the prayer of faith shall save, heal the sick. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man Abilis much. And after the healing, behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more. Lest the worst thing come on thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Your prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. By the stripes of Christ, He'll take every sickness away from your body. In Jesus' name. That sickness will not kill you. All the messengers of death, they are driven away from your body in Jesus' name. That your child will live. Your wife will live. Your husband will live. And all the oppression of the devil, all the oppression of evil spirits, cast out in Jesus' name. Your healing has come. My healing has come. Your deliverance has come. My deliverance has come. Mighty power has come. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm made whole. A confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. If you see Chris of that hand and lay the other hand on yourself. And if you have somebody you are thinking about who may not be here, far away, and you see this prayer will touch them. Hold their name in your mind as you raise up your hand for them. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your revelation. 
Thank you. It is not your will that any of us shall perish. Any of us shall remain sick. Any of us shall remain infirm. Any of us shall remain weak. Lord, I pray in your love and mercy, send forth your power in every life in Jesus' name. Grant your people the grace to be obedient unto you. Any strange woman they're keeping that is causing the problem? Anybody's money they're keeping that is causing the problem? Anybody's property land they're keeping that is causing the problem? Give them the grace to release everything belonging to other people to them in Jesus' name. Any careless, carefree action that is making you unhappy with anyone and therefore there's infirmity, there's sickness. Oh Lord, give everyone the grace to release and to stop all those things in Jesus' name. Grace for everyone. Mercy for everyone. Forgiveness for everyone. Freedom for everyone. Final solution for everyone. And healing, supernatural healing, divine healing for everyone in Jesus' name. Touch every brother. Touch every sister. Touch every born. Touch every girl. Touch every invitee. Sickness, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray those sicknesses will not come back again. Put testimony in every mouth. By the anointing, break every yoke. By your stripes, heal everyone. Confirm it, Lord. It is done. It is done. In your body. Say, in my body. In my soul, in my spirit, in my family, it is done. You'll go into the new year with a new strength, new wholeness, new soundness, new health, new power, new provision. You'll not be weak. You will not be sick. The inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick. For all their transgressions will be forgiven. Lord, confirm it in every life. There will be testimony. My brother there, there will be testimony. My sister, daughter there, there will be testimony. My boy, my girl, children, church, youth church, a campus church, you have testimony already. The Lord increase your joy and your victory. You'll be strong. And the Lord give you the strength you had 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 15 years ago. The power destroys the anointing you had. Get it back in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.